Are you considering taking up painting a little later in life? Or are you wondering if it's possible to fit an art practice into your already very busy life? Maybe you're struggling with stress or even depression, and you're wondering if a hobby like painting would help. If any of this describes you, I have some encouragement for you, straight from the pen of Sir Winston Churchill. In this video, I'm sharing my reaction to this little book, Painting as a Pastime by Winston S. Churchill. In it, we'll learn how painting became a constant companion to Churchill. It helped him through some of his darkest days and allowed him to view the world in a new way. And as a result, created a body of work that is prized by collectors today. Are you ready? Let's take a look. Welcome to my studio, my name is Chris. This channel is all about tools, tips, and tutorials for growing in watercolor. I am regularly reading books about watercolor, art, and creativity, among other things. In the process, I have curated a list of books that I think are invaluable to the watercolor artist. I have compiled a list of influential books and created a downloadable PDF document that I'm happy to share with you. You can find the link to that document in the description below. The book that I'm reviewing in this video actually didn't make it on that list, but it's a valuable book nonetheless. In Painting as a Pastime, Sir Winston Churchill tells the story of how he discovered painting in the second half of his life and how it became a source of great encouragement to him. Churchill started painting at the age of 40 during a very difficult and stressful time in his life. He even struggled at times with depression. He continued painting the rest of his life for the next 48 years, and in that time he produced over 500 paintings. He begins the book with an argument that we all need diversions from our normal occupations and that our minds are best rested and renewed when we employ them in activities that are different from our normal occupation. He states, to be really happy and really safe, one ought to have at least two or three hobbies, and they must be real. What does he mean by real? I think he gives a clue as to his meaning a little later when he argues we should call into use those parts of the mind which direct both eye and hand. He's referring to what many might call a handicraft. And on the very next page, he states, best of all of these handicrafts and easiest to procure are sketching and painting in all their forms. I consider myself very lucky, says Winston Churchill, that late in life, I have been able to develop this new taste and pastime. The following is how he describes the benefits of painting. He describes painting as an inexpensive independence, a mobile and perennial pleasure. He calls it mental food and mental exercise. He suggests that the old harmonies and symmetries can be experienced in entirely different language, the language of art. He says it adds interest to common scenes and is an occupation for every idle hour. And finally, painting is an unceasing voyage of entrancing discovery. Wow, what a list, right? So if you're convinced, as I am, by this long list of real benefits that can be gained from taking up the pastime of painting, listen to some of Churchill's suggestions for getting started. He states that the first quality that is needed is audacity. It's what I would call boldness. He suggests that we must just jump in and get started. However, he also warns, we must not be too ambitious. We should not aspire to masterpieces. We may content ourselves instead with a joy ride in a paint box. And for this, audacity is the only ticket. By saying this, I think he helps us take off some of the pressure of having to create the perfect painting and instead to just focus on painting for the pure joy of it. Painting should be a joyride. 
For the beginner, he recommends oils over watercolor. He gives three reasons for this preference. In praise of oil painting, he suggests that with oil you can correct mistakes much more easily than in watercolor. Secondly, you can approach your problem from any direction. And thirdly, he states the pigment itself, the oil pigments, is such nice stuff to handle. You can build it on layer after layer if you like, keep on experimenting, and if you don't like the painting, just scrape it all away in the end. I would have to agree with him that painting in oils is probably easier for beginners than watercolors, but I think I will stick with my watercolors. Next, he reminds the reader that he views the journey of the artist as a lifelong pursuit. It is not something that you master in a week, a month, or even a year. He states, every day you may make progress. Every step may be fruitful. Yet there will stretch out before you an ever-lengthening, ever-ascending, ever-improving path. You know you will never get to the end of the journey. But this, so far from discouraging, only adds to the joy and the glory of the climb. These are definitely the words of one who believes that painting is an endeavor worthy of one's best efforts and an activity that can fill a lifetime of pursuit and even beyond this lifetime into eternity. Here's what he states. When I get to heaven, I mean to spend a considerable portion of my first million years in painting and so get to the bottom of this subject. I love that. What a perspective. In the latter part of the book, he talks about how he was impacted by the work of the Impressionists. He describes their work thus. They view nature as a mass of shimmering light in which forms and surfaces are comparatively unimportant, indeed hardly visible, but which gleam and glow with beautiful harmonies and contrasts of color. Certainly it was of great interest to me to come suddenly in contact with this entirely different way of looking at things. Then he goes on to describe how this chance encounter with a few disciples of Cezanne changed his way of painting. He started to copy the Impressionist style. I love this section of the book. He describes over several pages how he adopted their approach to the use of pure color, the placement of dabs of paint, and the use of varied brush strokes. He gives a lot of really helpful examples of Impressionist painting techniques in these pages. Finally, he closes the book by suggesting a few exercises. First, he suggests painting from memory. There is no better exercise for the would-be artist than to study and devour a picture, and then, without looking at it again, to attempt the next day to reproduce it. Nothing can more exactly measure the progress, both of observation and memory. I think that that's a really interesting idea. I've never done it before, but I think I should and I will give it a try. And finally, he encourages the reader to combine painting with travel. He says, when you travel and paint, the vain racket of the tourist gives place to the calm enjoyment of the philosopher. It's intensified by an enthralling sense of action and endeavor. Every country where the sun shines and every district in it has a theme of its own. The lights, the atmosphere, the aspect, the spirit are all different, but each has its native charm. And I would add to that that whether you travel far abroad, like he did, or just around your neighborhood with a sketch pad and a paint box in hand, I believe you can experience and thereby remember those places much more vividly once you leave. The act of painting creates an impression that can be had no other way. With this in mind, I would venture to argue that painting can become much more than a pastime, but a way of experiencing life that can be enriching and fulfilling. So there you have it. My reflections on painting as a pastime by Sir Winston Churchill. If you'd like to read this book in its entirety, I will leave a link in the description below. It's a pretty short read, 
just 96 pages, and I was able to read it in under an hour. And be aware, my edition did not include any pictures of Churchill's paintings. However, I believe his words and perspective were worth, in my opinion, the price of the book. I enjoyed it. I hope you do too. Now let me end with a general encouragement to take time to read books on art. I have found books on art to be very enlightening and instructive. I have that list of recommended books that I mentioned earlier on my website at studio.kristabruin.com. I'll leave a direct link to the list in the description below. Do you have books that you have enjoyed that aren't on my list? I would love to hear from you. Please leave the book title and author in the comments section below. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your artist journey. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.